What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codeby.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to find the height and width of your app with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at how to find the height and width of our app programmatically. But before we get started, if you like this video, and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, I get this question a lot. So if somebody resizes your app or if you're app changes programmatically somehow. We kind of talked about that a couple of videos ago. How do you know at any given time what size your app is? There's lots of reasons might, why you might want to do this. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. And it's actually really easy. Kinter has some built-in functions that you can call that will tell you that will return whatever your current height and width is, as well as the uh, current X and Y position of your app. So I've got a file started here. I'm calling it info.py. And we've got our basic starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And I added a little bit different thing to our geometry here. Usually we just have say 800 by 800 to make it 800 by 800 or whatever. But now I've also added these two other things. These are X and Y coordinates. Now I've got two computer monitors set up. So whenever we run this, it will push the program over negative 1900 pixels, which will put it into my other computer monitor. You'll notice in these videos, whenever we start our Kinter apps, I always have to drag it from my other monitor over. Uh, this will allow me to not have to do that anymore. It'll just show up. So for instance, we can save this just really quickly, head over to our Git Bash terminal. And if we run this, boom, it just shows up right in this area. And that's just because of that, these two dimensions right here, X and Y. And it sort of feeds into what we're gonna look at in this video, how to get those X and Y coordinates and how to get these height and width coordinates as well. So like I said, if we run this, this is 800 by 800. And we know it's 800 pixels by 800 pixels because we've programmed it to be that right there in that line of code. But how do we find out what it is if it changes, if somebody changes it manually or, uh, cause you know, if we run this again, you know, a user can resize your app any way they want. And so, or they could just come up here and make it full screen if you've got this enabled and it's enabled by default. So like I said, lots of reasons why you might wanna know this information. So, all right, let's head over here and let's create a button real quick. Let's go my underscore button. And this is a button and we wanna put it in root and we want the text to equal just anything, click me. And we want the command to equal info or whatever. And then let's my button dot pack this and let's give this a pad y of 20 just to push it down the screen a little bit. Okay, so now let's create this info function. So let's go define info. And what do we want to do here? So let's create a label. Let's call this dimension underscore label. And this is a label and we want to put it in root and we want the text to equal something. And then let's go dimension label dot pack and give this a pad y of 20 to push it down a little bit. So we can actually get this geometry number just by calling w info geometry, which is called root dot w info underscore geometry. Now this is a function, so make sure that you put your little function brackets on there. So, okay, this will call window info, w info on our geometry for our root window. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. And let's come back over here and run this guy. And if we click, click me, we see 800 by 800. And then it's got that negative 900 by 100. And this is the X and Y coordinates of our, our app. So this is uh, Y and this is X. And it's the upper left hand coordinate. So the upper left hand X coordinate. So that would be upper left X, which I guess would be right here and then upper left Y also up here. So this point right here, I suppose, is nine, 19, negative 1900 by 100. So this is down 100 Y and it's over 1900, negative 1900, whatever. So, okay, that's interesting. And that will show us, you know, the geometry. What if we want specific things like just the height or just the width, right? So let's, let's look at that real quick. 
So let's create another label. Let's call this height underscore label. And this is going to be a label. And we want to put it in root. And we want the text to equal, let's go uh, height. And let's concatenate onto here. And we turn this into a string like we do, because this is going to return an integer number. And again, we'll just call root dot w info underscore height. Also, don't forget, this is a function. So put your little function brackets on there. So okay, let's copy this whole thing and paste it again. But we also need to height underscore label dot pack. And let's give this a pad y of 20 just pushed it down a little bit. And let's call this one with label. And here we want to say with let's put a colon next to these. Let's get fancy. <laughs> and maybe we want to capitalize this. I don't know. And here instead of w info height, you would guess and you'd be correct. It's w info width. Right? So let's save this and run it. And you could probably guess what's going to happen here. Boom. Oh, you know what we forgot to pack. I always forget to pack. So with underscore label dot pack. And we don't need to pad why this I suppose. Okay, so let's run this. Boom, click me height 800 with 800. If we resize this somehow, and then do it again, boom, height 385 with 433. Right? So however you anytime you change this, it updates and tells you your current height and width. So very, very cool and really, really easy. So that's height and width. You may want you might want to know the x y as well. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing and paste it. And instead of height label, let's call this x label. And this will be x label too. And this will be y label. And in here, you guessed it, instead of height and width, it's going to just be x and y. And let's call this x. And let's call this one Y. Go ahead and save this. Let's run this again. Boom, click me. So our X is negative, negative 1900. Our Y is 100. This is confirmed in this line right here that shows us the entire geometry. And if you want to see the changes, we've we moved this over a little bit. Now it's negative 1610 and it's still around Y 100. And very cool if we move it down. Our Y is going to be like 399 because we're pushing it down further. And very, very cool. So that's a quick and dirty way to get the dimensions and the height and width and the X and Y coordinates of your app. Really, really simple W info geometry. And we've looked at some W info things in the past for like killing child processes and in frames or something or other, and maybe some other things as well. It's useful. There's all kinds of W info things. Maybe we'll look at some of the other ones in the future. Uh, but these are the ones to get the height width X and Y and the geometry of your app. You can use these on anything. If you create a frame and you want to know the size of the frame, you can use, you know, just instead of calling root w info geometry, call, you know, the name of your frame or a button or I don't know if it'll work for a button, but uh, a lot of other things like that uh, you can you can grab the information for just by calling this little function that's built into Kinter. All right. So it is Monday morning here in Vegas. So this is going to be a short and quick video. Uh, but useful. I think a lot of people are always asking me how do we get this information programmatically in case your app changes size while you're running it or whatever. Like I said, lots of different reasons why you might need that. And uh, really, really simple. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So I pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.